Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at the terms enthalpy favored and entropy favored and talk about what they mean and practice applying them to certain reactions. Before we get started, let's just be clear that you might have also heard these terms as enthalpy driven or entropy driven, both of which mean the same things as enthalpy favored and entropy favored. So in general, what you're deciding when you're trying to determine if a reaction is enthalpy favored or entropy favored, it's like saying which of these two things, the enthalpy change or the entropy change, is helping to drive the reaction or helping to make the reaction to happen on its own. Which of them is helping the reaction to be spontaneous? And because you're looking for spontaneity, a good rule to use is just think about what signs for delta H and delta S. Uh, would help contribute to a spontaneous reaction or would help contribute to a value of delta G that is negative. And if you think about it that way, is always needing that negative delta G value, that release of free energy to get spontaneity, then it should make sense that a reaction is enthalpy favored whenever that delta H term is negative. You can imagine plugging in a negative number for delta H, that's going to weigh pretty heavily on helping the delta G to also be negative. At the same time, then, it should make sense that an entropy-favored reaction is going to be one where the delta S term is positive. Well, if we have a positive delta S, you are subtracting that positive number, also helping delta G to be negative. Or think about it the opposite way. What if delta S was negative? In that case, you'd be subtracting a negative or adding a number, which would be doing the opposite. That would be helping delta G to be positive, which we don't want. So these are the two signs you're looking for. Those are the key ideas for this video. So make sure you take a moment, pause, and write them down. So before we apply these terms to a real example, just realize that reactions can be enthalpy favored, entropy favored, favored by both enthalpy and entropy, or favored by neither. So let's wrap it up with a sample question involving these two terms and some other thermodynamic questions we've seen in the past. So pause the video, take a moment and try this on your own before you click play again and listen to my responses. So here's what you should have come up with. Right away, I can see that delta H has a positive sign. And a positive delta H is not going to be helping me to get a negative delta G. So this reaction is not enthalpy favored. Delta S, however, is also positive. And since we are always subtracting that delta S, a positive delta S does help me get a spontaneous reaction. So this equation is driven by entropy, but not by the enthalpy changes. Now the second part to the question asks if this reaction will be thermodynamically favorable at all temperatures. For a question like this, I always like to imagine plugging in the delta H I was given, in this case positive 491, and subtracting out some different possibilities for T delta S. Now in this case, I know my T delta S has to be positive because temperature in Kelvin is always positive and the delta S is also positive. So you could imagine one set of temperature conditions where T delta S is smaller than delta H. Let's say the temperature is such that the term is 400. In order those conditions, we'll get a positive answer for delta G. So at that temperature, the reaction is not thermodynamically favorable or not spontaneous. You could also then imagine a different set of temperature conditions where the delta H is still about 491, subtracting now a positive T delta S, except what about if the temperature was higher? Higher such that the T delta S term is bigger than delta H, let's say 500. Now under those conditions, my answer for delta G will in fact be negative, so the reaction will in fact be spontaneous. So is it favorable at all temperatures? No. Now we can answer the third and final question, which says if not, what temperatures are required for favorability? We'll go back to the delta H minus T delta S equation one last time, except now plugging in zero for delta G, because zero is the delta G value where it switches from negative to positive or spontaneous to not spontaneous. Plugging in that zero, solving for the temperature value gives me 2480 Kelvin or higher to make sure that that T delta S is bigger than the delta H or to make sure that we get a favorable reaction with a negative delta G sign. And that wraps it up for this video on enthalpy and entropy favored reactions. Thanks for watching.